Hello to all of our BP TV fans, Facebook fans, and YouTube fans, and a special thank you to all our new fans for hearing about our show. I'm Alan Levine, the Talking Machine, co-producer, co-host of Maria's Ideas Teaches Us to Paint. And guess who I'm going to introduce now? The co-host and co-producer. Tell us your name. Hello, Maria De Simone Prasik of Maria's Ideas, and we are here at John Ozar Studio in the hilltop on the South Side Slopes. And we are painting a bluebird today. Bluebirds, I believe, are back. I don't think they're here on the slopes. We don't get them I've here. I've seen them in Bethel yes, Park. Yes, we do get bluebirds here in Pittsburgh area. So we're going to paint bluebirds today. So today we are using white, black, yellow. I have a bright yellow, an aqua color, ultramarine blue, and orange. And I have a little different palette, yes, like, like an artist. Yeah. So I must have advanced a yeah, little bit. You are a real artist. So, <laughs> yeah. Thank right. you. So let's get started. We are using a transfer to draw the design since we don't have as much time to draw it. I have a 10 minute video on YouTube that you can draw the bird if you don't have the art kit. And do I, get a, do I have to have the black copy paper down? Yes, the transfer paper goes the dark side down if you get the art Just kit. Just wanted to put it out there because I questioned that. Yes. And I'd ra rather that you do yes. it right when Maria It's like carbon paper how. back in the day. Yes, but I'm old school, yes. so that is yes. back in the day. It yes. looks exactly the yes. same. And I taped it this time so that it'd be easier. So you can lift it up and see if you forgot anything. And just trace, if you get the art kit, you just trace it. It doesn't have to be ex exactly the way it is on the design, but just get a rough. I'm, I'm not even doing my flowers. The circles represent the flowers because I want those petals to be where I feel like they need to be when I paint them. So they might not, I, I would say don't do the flower circle, okay? My teacher? Yes. I'm gonna follow your lead. I would, usually I would not paint or draw the uh, leaves either, but I'm just going to, just to make it easier okay. for um, showing how others would maybe do that. And then you can see the transfer paper is a little smaller. So I yes, have to move. Yes, I have to yes, adjust so you it. just move that. And so I'll do that leaf, so just don't do the flower. And then the bird is mainly what you want to make sure that you have. Okay. Pretty accurate. But again, we're, as we paint, we'll cover up these lines anyway. And these are like the secondary feathers, primary feathers. You don't necessarily have to draw all of these lines because we're going to create the feather shapes with our brush. Well, thanks for making it so easy. Yeah, and then the tail. I wish we had bluebirds here. They're so cute. I do. They're get, coming. Yeah, but they are definitely already back. I have friends that are birders, and they said they're back. Oh. Uh, and they feed them mealworms. Well, I get a whole uh, plethora of different birds yeah. in my neighborhood. I'm near South Park in Bethel. Oh, and yeah. I even get turkeys. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> so... All right, I have mine done. So I'm just going to just show the artwork here that we're going to work on. So okay. we are going to paint the background first. If you do this at home on your own, you can paint the whole background that pale yellow, or mix the yellow and the white and just let it dry. Then you can draw your bird on top. That can make it easier, but for time's sake, and I wanted you to paint your background. Yeah. So we're just going to paint around it. And when we do, when we do paint in that sequence like that, I tend to um, paint my backgrounds with more texture. I like to see the brush strokes. I'm not worried about it looking perfectly smooth and, and one, you know, surface or, or one just right one texture, whatever. I'm not sure what I'm even trying to say. I just I'll like follow your lead. Yeah, How's I that? just like more energy or something in the brush strokes in the background. So I'm not real worried about that. So because when you're painting around leaves and flowers and birds, your brush strokes your and your brush in your hand is going in different directions. So if you're trying to make it look smooth in all one direction, it's a little tricky when you're doing that. So I don't even try and I just make it more interesting. 
Okay, so let's start with the large one inch flat shader. Oh my goodness, so, I, I don't think I've used this much. Yes, I know. So we're going to dip it in the water and that just wets the brush a little and then it can accept the, grab the paint and hang on to that. Always take the extra water off. I did. And you notice I, I've been doing that. Yeah, so you can mix your paint on your palette but in this case, the way I'm painting, I mix my colors right on the canvas because I kind of want I'll them to, to smush them. Your lead. Gives it a little me. more of an interesting look because that's what I'm going for. So I'm going to mix the yellow and the white. This yellow is very strong. So we're going to mix probably a little more white than yellow. And um, yeah. also this brush is a little softer. Some of the brushes this size are a little stiffer and you'll get a little I more I noticed control. it felt it's very little, soft. So we'll have to, deal with that but it's okay we'll make that work so i'm actually like i said i'm going right into the the white okay and then what i'm going to do is go into the yellow i'm putting the corner of my brush into the yellow yeah i'll do it this way i'm putting the corner of the brush into the yellow just so i don't contaminate the whole pot of yellow yeah so just kind of like that so i have yellow and white on the brush together okay and then but i'd say more white than yellow okay so a little bit of yellow Yes, and then white. So what? flip it on the other side and get the... Get the white. Yes, a lot of white, yeah. And then I'm just going to pick a spot and come in and you can see how they're mixing right on the canvas. And, I, and the colors dry uh, darker, acrylics dry slightly darker. Yeah. So keep that in mind. On camera sometimes the yellow doesn't show up as much, so I'm not sure if you're seeing that on camera as well. So no, mine's a little, a little white. And you can see now, look, see, it's a little bright, it's whiter here, yellower here. Just have fun with it. And then uh, I would suggest just if you flip your brush this way, like that, back oh, and like forth. Oh, smooth it out there. Well, if you flip it like this, back and forth, it creates nice cross hatching brush strokes that make it more interesting. That's above my pay grade. Yeah. So you can see <laughs> I'm just using the, the edge and the tip to come around the bird. You've taught me with those edges, so yes. I hope you're all learning like I am, yes. that that edge gives well, you a nice sharper <laughs> look there. Now on the edge, in the corners of the canvas, I'm going to make it a little more bold and then so a little darker. lighter. Yeah, I mean, you, you do whatever you like. Well, you know I'll run free, so yeah, you don't definitely. have to tell me twice. Yes, and since you didn't draw your leaves, which is fine, you can just Go paint the whole up. canvas and then your leaves the green will cover the yellow fine. Well, so I tried just, to leave where the stem yeah, comes down. Yeah, that's okay. And you can paint over that too. You'll be able to see uh, some of the yellows. A lot of paints are translucent or a little more transparent. So you can paint. You could see, look, if I paint right over those lines, yeah. you'll still see that. And then that way you know I noticed in our past uh, paintings that that happens. I would say go definitely go up to the lines and probably paint over the lines okay. if you can, just so you don't have any gaps that you have to worry about touching up. Thank you for you your guidance. You want that background color to go all the way in and then make sure you go under the bird. Okay. And I'm, you can see this is fun. It's quick. You just kind of just lay it on there. This is fun. Mm -hmm. And make some areas, like I said, I'm making some darker, some lighter. I'll put my white here. And then just come all the way around as you block in. I'm using the corner of the brush and the edge of the brush as I come in and cut in around the bird. Well, so, I got to practice on that. Yeah. So I have. Yeah, this brush is really soft. It's it kind of smushing down. It's still working for this, but usually when you want to have a little more control yeah. for the lines, you you need a little bit more of a stiffer brush. But for this subject, we're good. Guess what? I'm having fun, so you Good. keep talking. That's here. the main thing. <laughs> and keep guiding. <laughs> so we are going to use the uh, filbert or curved flat. It could be called a shader, but is it that is like it the is half curved. inch one in my mind. It's half inch and it's curved. Some of them are curved a little more than others, but this one's this will work. That's how simple I look yes. at it. And the reason we're using this is because we have curves on the bird and our feather shapes. We're going to let the brush do the work for us and we start dark to, we paint dark to light when you're working with acrylics okay so i'm going to take some of the blue this is ultramarine blue it's a warmer blue like phthalo blue there are different blues uh, okay. navy blue we want a warmer blue 
Uh, so if you don't have it, you can mix a little red into the blue, your Whoa. blue, and that usually will warm it up a little. It almost almost leans towards sort of a, a purple. purple. Right. Yeah, you got me right. interested. Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm laying my brush down, and you can see I'm not worried about making it a perfectly smooth arch. I'm letting that kind of brush stroke be a little jagged as if the texture I know, of his feathers. I know, that. That's interesting. Right. So I'm just filling this in, and they have a little, little bit of some maybe black feathers behind the eyes. I'm just leaving a to little gap. To show you how slow I am, I just finished. No, you're good. Oh, you're caught up. Okay, hey, yeah. that, put and that I'll... in the water and grab your filbert, half-inch filbert, and okay. your ultramarine blue. All and right. I'm coming around. Do I have two of the ultramarine blues? I just gave you extra. I just, no, I was just asking because I don't want to yes. get confused here. Yes. So we're going to, so we're using that ultramarine blue. So and again, see how you have that little, that's good. Like you don't, I like the little, it's like maybe a little jagged because that could be yeah. like little feathers, you know, even though they do have a smooth head right, right. or crown, that would be the crown uh, on the bird. Uh, so that's good. And then. Thank you. Yes. As I come down under the beak and right where this blue transitions into the orange, I'm just going to add a little bit of white, but I'm not dipping my brush because my brush still has the blue. I don't want to take that blue off because I want a lighter oh, okay. blue. But when I do that, I go into the edge of my white instead of contaminating like the whole pot. Just a little paint. piece. So this I want a little bit, oh, I still want more white. So I'm going to take that extra blue off. This is, and I'll test it right here. So I'm going like this and just. So I grab a little bit of white. I would say take the extra blue off either on your paper towel or I'll your do it on the plate. Yes, and then grab some white so that we just want a lighter blue. All right, thank you. And we you. just want to bring just a little bit under here and then now watch this. If I just hit my brush just a little bit and pick it up. Oh, your feather. See that looks like little feathers. Since we have this light blue on our brush, yeah. I'm going right down here where it's under the tail and put a little bit of that light blue. Even though it might not, it's probably like a white and it turns to gray. I'm just going to throw a little bit of that. Yeah. And oh, that's my, good. Mine's not as precise. No, as it's you. good. And then we're going to rinse the brush because we want the true blue now. Okay, so back to that. Yes. Rinse your brush. So we're going to rinse your brush. Always take care of your brushes too. Yes. You try not to get the paint in that, this is called the ferrule. Try not to get the paint up in the ferrule of the brush, which I unfortunately am not really good at. Well, I'm heavy-handed, so yes, I Yes, I am too. <laughs> but anyway, that because it dries up in there and then the bristles spread apart and then the brushes don't work as well. Yes. So, okay, so I am rinsing the brush, putting that in the water, grabbing this ultra green blue again, and we're going to work on the secondary feathers and the primary feathers. However, now feathers lay on the wings and the bird, on the birds like shingles on a roof. That's how uh, I... So they can I, be like layered? Well, but when you put a... Sh if do you, Did you ever shingle a roof? I yes. did. Okay. So do you start at the roofs, top or the bottom? You start yeah. at the bottom or the top? A uh, bottom straight line right, all the way Right, because the other See, shingles... Right, they have to lay... The shingle, the, the feathers are like this. So they have to lay on top. So you need to do... Thank the, you for showing me that. So I always can refer to... Can you show them food. what you just did? Yeah, I, I, so I just refer to... Because that's a good tip. The lower feathers are here, and then the other feathers on top. So, okay, then I'm going to try. I'm excited to do that. So we to need to that. start the bottom, and then lay the other feathers on top. Okay. Now, when we do that, I purposely will leave space. some space, kind of. But also, when you hold the brush, are you still using your filbert. Yeah. See the shape of this feather. Yeah. You want to hold the the paintbrush vertically and in this direction because and then you just push and press down and pull up and that will give you your feather shape so you pull up as you go up and then you can see now when I lay this next feather in I'll lay oh, overlap a little bit okay but then like you said maybe leave a little gap there you could see as they're laying now also if you if you add we can add a little tiny bit of white just a touch. Now watch if I add the little tiny white, so that each section is not exactly the same tone. Okay. 
So if I add a little bit of white, you can see that right there? Doesn't that feather look like that's on top of this one? Yeah. So if you add as you come up, just mix, just to vary the color a little. Right. Now, doesn't that look like feathers, right? And you have that darker underneath right here. You can see it's a little darker. Yeah. And that's what gives you the illusion of feathers. I see it. Yeah. And then, so we can come down on the tail. We can do the same thing. We'll come up like this. And it's a little darker in the center. And you can see this filbert brush creates that, that rounded tip, which we want. Yeah. And just always keep in mind the direction of the feathers. You, same thing would you would apply the same same um, theory with feather. I mean fur. So you can see I'm just adding a tiny bit of white here and there, and I can always make them a little darker too. Yeah. And then where they transition together, see this and this, you can like you said feather feather a little bit. In. So yeah. I'm going to move ahead and paint now the secondary. These feathers come down like this. This comes here. This one's here, and these feathers come. Now you can see how I, as I lifted and I left those gaps, that's for the next row. Oh, that looks good. Thank you. So I would say make it a little darker initially and then go in with then the- Then go lighter. Yes, because then the dark underneath gives you those it gaps and makes yeah. it look, gives it depth. The, the um, dark colors recede and the light colors come forward. Okay. So. You can see here, if I do that, I'm purposely leaving those little gaps, and then I can always go back in and fill them up. And I'm taking that extra white off and just adding. So I'll just go back in. And then when it's all painted, you can go back in. You can add your little highlights. I think I'm going to add just a couple. And we're not trying to paint this like a photograph or anything. This is just our interpretation of a bird. Yes. And... No, I don't like that. That's too bright there. But I have to wait till that dries now to fix that up a little bit. So I have my blue, and then it's a little. I'm going to add just a little hint of some blue here, just like that. I'll get my little white and try to mingle it. Yeah. Co mingle. And then the black, I, I again did not clean my brush. I'm just took that excess. I'm trying to follow your lead. No, you're good. You're doing good. And Thank I'll you. take a little bit of black, and I need some depth under this primary, under the wing here. So I'm So you have the darker and the right, light with so it. Right, so the black creates the depth. You see that? That looks like yeah. it's underneath, and then also under the tail. And again, I'm keeping those brush strokes the same direction as I painted them. And then the little white feathers will come on top. They will lay on top of the darker. I can throw in a couple little dark things here. And then there is a little, you can use a smaller brush for this, but I'm still pretty comfortable with this one here. And I'm laying in a couple little brush strokes dark around the eye. And then we'll do the beak with the smaller brush. Okay. Now, since, and I tried to be, I guess, efficient with my time. So since I have black on my brush right now, yeah. there might be a little bit of blue in there, and I know I need some dark gray. I'm just going to take some of that extra black off, and I'm going to add a little bit of white, and that makes like kind of like a dirty... So I should grab gray. a little black, well, and then... Or... Yeah, you need some black first, and then go into... Okay, go black. Right here, yes. And I'm not cleaning my brush off. Right, so, so... this section right here... Oh, I under missed that. Yeah, the, I went more wing, blue. And that's okay. Under the wing and then under the tail. So under. So I need. Well, oh. you have the line drawn. Yeah. You have it drawn. Here, let's show yours right here. So Alan has. There's the line here. Is going to put the dark here. Yeah. And then under here, and then that gives. Thank you. That some depth. And then I'm going to paint this kind of like a charcoal, charcoal color transition from that black here I'm coming up again keeping with this direction of the feathers the uh, picture I'm using as a reference I'm just looking back at that make sure I have that right if you get the art kits you get a picture too and otherwise you it's on online and you can just look at that now this is a dry brush technique now as your paint comes off of the brush and you want the dry brush technique meaning 
you can start seeing the canvas, see how it kind of looks a little, yeah, you got leaves yours. the gaps. I want that now because I want to transition from the gray to the white. So I'm going to just go like this and let that kind of clean the brush off a little bit. And you can see that that will help create a little bit of some shadows for me with that as I'm kind of cleaning yeah. my brush off. And it shows the texture of Oh, it really does. You see there? Yeah, thank you. This is going pretty good here, I think. So just so you know, bluebirds can fly up to like 45 miles an hour. Wow. If they have to. They love mealworms. If you do get bluebirds, you feel feed the mealworms. Yeah. And um, yeah, they do. They 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 fly. They migrate. If they're northern, they migrate to lower areas in okay. like eastern United States. Otherwise, or well, they don't go down some to of them stay around here? Do they stay around at all or not? I I our bluebirds go to Mexico. Okay, that's what I, I wanted to know. Yeah, yeah, but they're they're already back. So, um, and they can see an insect like. 60 feet away. <laughs> Zoom in on it. Well, I've seen a few around in Bethel here. So. Yeah, they're so cute. All right, so yeah, I... Yeah, they're smaller than those blue jays that are sort of mean. Oh, yeah. I would say the blue birds are probably... They're smaller than the actual no, they, size of this. I think they're pretty small. Yeah, I think they might be, yeah. Yeah, they're so cute. How are you doing over there? You good? That looks good. All right. I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. So I'm going into... My, I'm going to switch my palette here so you see. So now I'm going to work on the breast of the bird, which is on our design. We take our artistic license a little bit with our artwork. Yeah. I wanted this to be colorful. I know in reality they're not this bright orange, but we like color. <laughs> they we want to they look robin like. Exactly. But and I'm going to clean my brush yeah, then. It's kind of more of a, a, a rustic, rusty orange, but we're doing orange. Because Whoa. we want you got this a bright to be, orange there for yes. me. So use the same brush and clean it. I am now. I do feel that this is a little too bright when I look at it here. So um, I think I'm going to add a tiny bit. Let me try a little bit of blue. Uh, I'll follow your lead. That kind of tones it down a little. If and if we add if we add a black. We can't. We could use black too, but it makes it a little dirtier looking. I'm adding a little bit of this ultramarine blue. Oh, really? Eh. Yeah, and then a little white, maybe a little white. That looks a little better. And then we're coming in, and we are using a dry brush technique right where it meets. So if I do that, look, you can see my gray underneath there because it's a very thin layer. Yeah. Now I need to make more. Now I'll come in with the brighter orange. Again, I'm starting lower like the shingles, right? Start yeah. at the bottom and then just try to alternate the brush strokes so that you're not... Ooh, that looks not safe. the same one. Try same to keep exact space. Now this looks, that looks pretty nice too. I added a little bit of that aqua in the orange and I do, I will hit another some some of the brighter orange after this dries. I just want to get this little toned down version here. I gotta add a little orange to mine. Yeah. Now when you when your brush gets to these edges, now watch if you just kind of lift oh, it up, it creates a little feathery a little lift. So that's a little bit darker. Now I'm going in and I'm just going to add some with the brighter orange yeah. on top. And I'm going to add a little bit of white. Going here and there. I think I'm going to switch. Okay, so this is the little quarter inch uh, filbert brush, and I am using those same colors, but I just wanted to have a little bit smaller shape for the feathers as I come up. And then when I'm adding that white into the feathers on the breast with that orange, and I think I'm going to add a tiny bit of yellow also. Just Whoa. I want this right here. I want this part of the the bird's breast to come forward so lighter colors come forward, right? Yeah, it comes out. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do that here. All right. And well, I'll try to experiment you with see, you. Yeah, it's kind of coming. And then there are some areas where the white and the gray and the blue, you can see here where they come together here and here. 
You see some of the little white feathers. And then we, we want to get this little wispy. Well, I've been listening, so I got no, some yellow good. in there. That looks good. And then we want some of these little wispy things. We'll do that with a little liner brush. Okay. So I'm just filling in just here and there where I feel like I need some interest. But I still feel like it needs to be a little, little brighter here. Being heavy-handed, I didn't go to the thinner brush. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. So I would say we'll go to the smaller brush whenever you want to get these little wispy feathers. So I'll feathers. do that now. So we are taking our little liner brush, and we'll dip that in the water. And that's the littlest brush we have? Yes. So what we in want to do... In layman's terms that I'll understand. Yes. So let's <laughs> show Alan's here. So... He wants to transition from here to here. We're going to add those little details. We could do that. All right. So we are going to use the orange with the white. So the, orange with white. And whenever you use the little liner brush, you always want to keep that nice little tip on the brush. So you twirl the brush in your hand and your fingers like this. And that keeps, after you load now the brush. I'll add a little white to it. Yes, I'm going to add, I'm double dipping Should here. I do it on my plate? I just. Or just do it you on can. the bird. You can test it to make sure that the tip I'll just is good. go in, yeah. Now you can see on the bird, these little, we want to create these little wispy little, oh, couple so little feathers, and then there's some down here. So that's what we're trying to Oh, well, I got too much here. white. But. So little here, and you just add little orange. Just kind of come in like this. If you have a fan brush, you can also use a little fan brush. But we're not using a fan brush today. So you can see the tiny little feathers. Mine are a little thicker, but. That's okay. This is your artwork. You can do <laughs> anything you want with it. Well, I'm trying to follow your lead. No, you're good. You're good. And then I think I need to get the little white here. Now I'm just kind of kind of cleaning off my brush, honestly, and just yeah. kind of coming in, throwing in where I feel like. And, and sometimes whenever you're working from a photograph that maybe you take, um, uh, when you paint something, you have to adjust the colors and the way you see it on a two-dimensional canvas. Right. So even though it might I've tried not, to add a few like yeah, this. Not it's, as precise, but right. and, I'm getting there. No, it's good. And even though the bird itself may not have these white little feathers right here. Again, this is artwork and this is our interpretation of it. That's what we want to do. So you need to make the painting look good, not worry about the photograph. That's just inspiration. So yeah. we want the painting to work. So it's coming along. I feel like I see some areas where it's too bright. I'll go in after this dries. I'll go in and hit. Um, yeah. some other things but we're going to let this dry a little bit because then we add our twigs and okay our, so clean the brush and yeah and then we have to add um the feet and all so i'm just throwing in a couple little well we do use the little brush for the feet and... yeah you know what let's do the eye and the beak um, okay since we have this little brush so i'm ah, going to clean okay. the brush yeah i clean and mine the beak um i'm going to assume it's probably like a lot of birds it's kind of a yellow or tan or whatever yeah. so I'm going to use the yellow, but I'll mix some white with it and maybe a tiny bit of orange just to make it like a warmer golden yellow. Okay. And just, you can say, if you lay the point right here, yeah, you just lay it in there, just a couple brush strokes will give you your, the beak. And then I'm going to clean my brush. I want a very, very tiny line. So you want this black to be kind of inky, okay, like an ink or milky, very thin. And I'm, you can see I'm testing it on my palette. I'm twirling that, get that tiny yes. little point. So when we come in, this under section of his beak is dark, mostly here. But I don't want like a big, like smiley face right, line right. in between. So I want this very, very thin. So I usually you want the brush to be um, a little point. Yeah. But in this case, I want it to be flat. Okay. So, and this is why if I flatten that brush, then I can come in and just do a little tiny, little tiny line, just like that. Okay, so just very thin there. Very thin, I flattened the brush. And then the, um, 
the nose or that on a bird a nair, it's called a nair or the nose. Okay. Right there, that's how they breathe. We'll get that little dot in here, right there. Okay. And then for the eye, we're going to use black. Usually if you paint like the letter C, can you see this good enough here? A C in there, yes. The letter yes. C, and then the backward C, and then you just fill it in, that gives you a nice circle. And then we're going to clean that brush off a little and add some white. I don't want a true white, kind of like a dirty white. Will it be a smaller white, like mine's too large for the eye? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Paint that the whole thing black. And then we're going oh, to come okay. in and outline with the white, just a little, like a little under the eye because of the, the yeah, outer. Lighter color. So we want that light, the, like a gray, like this right here. You could see it's highlighting the eye in its socket like this. Just a little, not too bright white, just kind of like a gray. See, that's too white. A little bit right here. And then when you paint, so you can see his eye right there. Yeah. You highlighted the outside I'm of it there, too. I'm going to bring this up here. All right, let's see if I can replicate but, that. Okay, you see his eye? But watch. That looks great. But kind of shark guy, right? Yeah. Because he doesn't have his little highlight in his eye yet. So I'm going to clean my brush. Okay. And I'm going to make a little point on it. Now you see that eye right there? That's yeah. okay. But watch. Let me get my little. Wow, wonderful. It I comes gotta... to life, right? Yeah. Just with that little dot. If the white dot is too big, kind of looks a little googly eyed, like a little funny. I feel like mine might be a little bit too big. After it dries, I'm going to hit a little bit of black on there. It's okay. I feel like it's maybe a little bit too big. Well, I know mine's too yeah. big. <laughs> My bird, now his eye, it's, it came down a little bit, the, the white, and it looks like he's mean, so I have to fix that. All right. Well, if it, like the eye or any little feathers come this way, it looks kind of, kind of cranky so we don't want that although like they do have a reputation of of uh Crankiness. yeah well not that they are but their images sometimes i guess the way their their faces look or their beaks or something yeah sometimes it'll you'll say people will say angry bluebird it'll show people. yeah they've said it a lot yeah yeah that looks like that so i need to let this dry i know it needs some little highlights and maybe some shadows but i need to let this dry okay so Thanks how for the are tip on the blue. There? I'm trying to get that more yeah, rounded. Yeah, that's good. So to make the eye, you want that eye. I think your eye needs to be a little rounder. Here's what you're going to do. Okay, teacher. Right. I'll clean my brush yes. and let me go. Black. Put black on your brush. You okay. might need to let that dry first. Yeah. So whenever you're trying to draw a circle, this is what I usually do. I do the letter C. Okay. I heard you say that earlier. I and tried. then the backward C. And that's pretty that's a great easy circle. way to do a circle. All right, black. So you might need to let it dry. Depends on. Yeah. I think you need to let that dry a little. I trust your judgment. Yeah, I'd let it dry a little bit. So I'll let's. Let the brush. I like it. Very. Um, you have a lot of energy in your bird's feathers. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Thank okay. You. So let's work on the branches. Okay. We are going to use the half inch flat shader. I got it. Okay. It's really soft too. Yeah. Now we can make the branches green, we can make them brown, we can make them black. We don't have brown, but we can make brown. And usually you would use like the primary colors, red, yellow, blue. We don't have red. We no. have orange and we have yellow. And blue. So let's just orange, mix up. Yellow and blue. Let's just mix up the colors and it'll make a brown. You know, we're going to grab. I trust you. What should I grab first? And, and the, the branch on our design not that, again, not that it has to look exactly like It's pretty dark. There's some brown in there. There's some black. I'm going to start with the blue. I'm going to start with the blue. Okay. So this is dark. And then I'm going to add some orange. Ooh, that's pretty brown already. That looks nice. I actually like that. And then if you add a little yellow or white, you'll get a little brighter. That actually is pretty. The blue and then the brown, um, orange. Oh, that... And I think that I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. That's a nice brown. I like it. All right. So what we're doing here is coming in. I'm holding my brush vertically, like 
prune this branch, yeah. and then we have one here that I didn't draw, and then a couple other ones. And I'm, you want to load your brush enough so it has enough paint on it, so when you do this, it will look resemble more like a real branch. So okay. here's how I'm going to so do this. So long lines. So watch what, well, but instead of just going like this, yeah. I'm going to wiggle like my it, hand yeah. a little, make it thicker, and just kind of wiggle it a little bit. And you can see it gives it a little more interest there. And then I can add a little bit of white if I want and just throw some little highlight on there. So if you just wiggle the brush a little bit, it just creates some texture on the branch. And then this one, oh, I see, I forgot to paint some yellow. Oh, I did in too. Here. So this, so this is the branch here. It's going to come down. It's going, we want this to be fatter at the bottom, thicker, okay? So that it's, he's on like a meatier branch at the bottom. And okay. then this one, so let's see, this is the branch here. And then his body is here. And that I have to paint yellow. So I'll go back in and do that. All right, so that's our branch here. And I'm gonna grab some more brown. And then as the branch comes up, you want to pull up on the brush so that it's thinner line. Oh, as you're going up there. Yeah. Okay. You can make really good branches if you get shaky, like from drinking coffee or something. That I don't make, drink it. <laughs> I'll yeah. have to make it up. I, I only have one little cup in the morning, but otherwise you can... You can make really good branches. You can kind of. <laughs> well, I'll struggle. I just yeah. had my green tea. There you so. go. So I'm going here, and then I have one up here. And I'll even do like a couple little things. And I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to hit my branch with maybe some blue or aqua yeah. or something after it dries. That looks good. Yep. Yep, keep that going. All right. So I want to make green. So with our palette here, what colors will we use to make green? With green? Mm hmm Yellow and blue? Right. And we have two different blues. I know. Do so we, we use can, the lighter one? Let's do it all. Okay. Let's use, let's make I'll different greens. That. Right? Let me let's wash again. Let's do, um, we'll make different color greens. Leaves have more than one color in them. Yeah. So if I mix this yellow, now this yellow is a, like more like a lemon yellow. Uh, if it's a cad yellow or a warmer yellow, it would be a different green. But if I add, so it's not bad. But then I'm going to make some with that aqua too, I think. So okay. generous amount of the green. And remember, it dries darker. It always dries darker. So if you love this color and you want your leaf to be that color, you have to make it a little bit lighter because it's going to dry darker. So I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. And then when to paint the leaf, Alan, we're going to come this way. We're going to... Which way? We're going to hold the brush like this, and we're going to lay it down on the canvas, okay. and we're going to let that edge right here and of come the down brush from it. and pull around, just pull your hand like this, and then as you come, watch to the point, you come up like wow. that. You see that? I and love that, that point right. there. And so it creates the vein in the center at the same time, and you can also do this if you'd like. So I took the extra paint off my brush. So watch, I'm going into my green. Now I'll say I'm just going to add, I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow or yeah. different color on that one corner of the brush. Yeah. Now I'll watch when I lay this down. See uh, how it, that yeah. yellow, it and made then it I'm coming lighter. back. It, it, it didn't show up too well on that one. I'll do a better no, one. No, you're so good. It, uh, I'll see if I can get close. So the key is, set it down, lay it down, bring it down. The Oh, That's good. I think there's a little, a little bit too much paint on your brush. Yeah. And then this, so I just did the one side. Oh, of uh, one yeah. side. Okay. I can only get a part. Well, no. So you just add the other side of your leaf. So I would say, and you want your brush to be kind of flat. Yeah. Let me. So now you want to, here. Let me. So we can show, since yes. just the two of us. Yes. So if you want to paint this side, so now you're going to come in. More on the this edge. way, and so it'll just be a bigger leaf. So you want to lay the brush down. Okay. This way, like yes. You did. Push, and then as you're coming, you twist it, turn it. There you go. Good. A little Good. bit better. I just feel like your brush needs. Um, it's too thick looking. It's too There's heavy. There's too much paint in there. Yeah. It. So take that, like, thin it, like. Yeah, I'm I trying. I would rinse it. Okay. Rinse it, and then when you load your brush, just flip. A try little to bit. Get, 
Yes, try to load it both sides. Always load both sides of the brush. I but do. you can see how that tip is flat. Yeah. See, and mine we, wasn't that flat. No, we need we need the bristles to be flat. There. How's that? Good. So load it, double load, and I'm going to try some of this aqua on the corner. And I'm coming up here. Ooh, I like that. And see, I'm laying the brush down, but as I'm coming, I'm twisting. Yeah. And then picking up, just like that. And then we'll come in this way. So it depends on how much paint you have on your brush. I have to fill oh, that in. too much in. again. <laughs> Wait a second. So it takes, you could, it takes a little practice. I need to practice, practice that, here. yeah. Here, practice on this. Here, I'm just going here. So here, watch. Yeah. So you, you go push down. You see I'm twisting and pull up. Push down, twist, as you come, and up. But you just have uh, to, you just have to fine. like not, yeah. Not press so, down. So watch my brush. Raise up. Oh, I should do it over here. Yeah. Twist, and see I'm just See, you're getting, raising I'm, it up. It's like, yeah. look, it's all the way up. That's how you get that little point. And then try. you can come. And then you can also do smaller leaves by just doing something like oh, that. Let me just see if I can get close to that. And up. Yeah, you just have to, now you need more paint on your brush. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something. <laughs> yes, there is. Oh! Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look, you made the vein in my leaf. Look at that. <laughs> so, this just goes to show you. There's never mistakes in art, right? Now look, Alan You're too accidentally kind. laid my foam core sample block on top of my canvas. I apologize. Look, it's kind of serendipitous. Look, it added. It worked. Look at the corner. So I'm leaving that. And I'm leaving that. I'm leaving that. That's Alan's contribution. You know what? Maybe it's a part of the leaf is blowing away. All right. Yes. I like it. But it's so funny. It went right where that vein. That is the synchronicity. That's awesome. I love it. All right. I'm coming Thank in. you. I love it. Now, I really like this aqua color. So I'm putting more in my, my leaf. So it's green and I have that aqua. So I'm coming in and then so it's, you just want, you you need to find that ratio of enough paint, but not too much paint. Yeah, I was enough too much. Enough to keep it moving, but not too much that um, it's it just doesn't lay the brush down. Like yeah, mine to. was way too so much. You could see I just laid a little bit of paint on top of there. And let's see, I have one more here. Oh, a lot of aqua on that one. I like that one. See that? So I'm just changing it as I go. Why not? So I have four leaves. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh, one more. Up here. I'm thinking I knew I had five. Odd numbers are usually better with a lot of things. Composition and all. Not necessarily, but I like odd numbers with things. So that's... Okay. All right. So there are my leaves. And I love this color so much. I'm going to just hit... So I'm going to clean my brush off. I'm going to throw some of this on my branches just because I like it. I like the color. And I think I'm going to put a little bit on the bluebird too. Right like that. So this brush I'm using on the feathers too, but you can see I'm using that edge. Yeah. And I'm just laying it here and there. Oh, I like that color on him. Kind of gives it. I got a little crazy here. I did a tip and a twist here. Nice. I like it. <laughs> see, you're getting there. It takes practice, Alan. I've been doing this for a long time. So. This is only credit. my fifth show, no, Maria. No, it's good. And how many leaves have you done like that? None, really. So None. You're, 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 you just, you need to sit at home and practice. Well, I have to start doing that. Yeah. All right. I like this. I need to put some yellow in between here because I forgot to do that. And then I need a little stem connecting my leaves. And I'm letting my bird dry. Oh, I take that back. I'm going to do his feet. We're going to mix up a brown again. Oh, we need add a brown some again. White. And then his little feet come out. This one is on this. It doesn't really, I mean, mine's kind of greenish too. It doesn't matter. We're just putting his little, his little toes, his little feet there. And then the branch, I forgot the branch has to come up onto like this in front of him so that it looks like he's sitting on the branch and then I'll put a couple little highlights on that branch and then I'll clean my brush and take that little tip oh I gotta get yellow in mine too yeah and then I'm going to just put that little 
couple little highlights for his um, on his little feet. So this should be dry enough. I can put that little white dot for the eye. Yes, but his eye needs to be round or his eye. So I got to round kind of it with the black like a first. triangle. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll go back to that. Yep. So a little highlight, and now I'm coming in with some little. We want some of these little feathers to come over where that the the leg goes up underneath the feathers. Oh, okay. You see that we yeah. need a couple of these little white feathers to overlap. Mine's a little too wet still, so I'm going to I have to come back to that. See, I just keep touching it up, messing with it. All right. We need to let that go. I'm going to do my flowers. I know I'm jumping, jumping, jumping around. I think I that shaped looks good. it better. That looks good. Okay, let that dry. I'll let that dry. Yes. Take the brush. I'm so gonna, let's do our flowers. I'm going to grab a little yellow to yeah, put, put in some with yellow this brush. In there. That looks good. And we're yeah. going to do our flowers. Thank you for your help. I sure. appreciate it, teacher. Sure. Now, I think these could be, these could be a, um, mock, is it called a mock orange? Mock yeah. orange. Yeah. Or a dogwood or something. Um, they could be it's whatever like you it, want. Yeah. So because we have orange on our palette, we're going to make orange blossoms. Anytime you repeat a color in composition, that makes it a little more cohesive. Ooh. So I'm using, you got that yellow in there? Yeah. I'm using uh, the Filbert, half inch Filbert curved brush. Let's just put our, our brush in the orange and just put it a, a little dot where we know we want the flower, just so the center of the flower. I feel like I'm going to put one there, I'm going to put one here, oh, okay. and I'm going to put one here. You can add more flowers if you want. I'm just doing those three places. There. That just gives you something to, yes. To go and by. Then, yes. And then here. And then I and have then the other my, one like down oh, here I somewhere. Oh, I put a flower. You could put it I, there. I put a leaf there by That's accident. fine. That's good. Okay. All right. We so staying with orange or going on? We're going to use the orange, but we're going to double load our brush. So double loading is when you put two or three or more um, colors on your paintbrush at the same time. So grab orange first. So we're going to go into the orange. Okay. Generous amount. Let me I'm going generous. Clean space. Generous amount. I got to turn my plate. And I'm kind of loading the brush on my palette. And I'm going side to side yeah. so I get it. So let's just do, mine has some blue in it, but that's okay. Let's do the orange first and then we'll come in with the yellow. So this filbert brush is great for flowers and I'll show you why. You got your trick and technique. You can, if you want the petal this size, push down and pull up. There's your petal. You push down, come out beyond your center. That's why I wanted you to okay, paint the center. Okay, so go push out here. Push down and come toward the center. So lay up it, here. Lay it this way, flat. Lay it this lay way. Lay it down. Push down and pull up. Okay. And then you just rotate your hand. Like a kind of like a wagon wheel, and there's okay. your flower, right? And then just just repeat the same thing. So you come out beyond. If you press it down, it, the petal will be bigger. Yeah. If you want a really big petal, you can go like this. Whoa. And make it really big. I want that flower right, even me... bigger. Here, you lay it down. You see how I'm laying it down? <laughs> yes. And I'm pulling it around like that. Wow. So I want this one bigger. I'll this one could be smaller, here. and this one could be smaller. Ooh. And then I'll come in, I'm going to clean my brush off just on the paper towel, I'm not wetting it. And I'm going to come in with some yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to just kind of pop it in on top just to give them a little I tried interest. to correct my other orange, so I got a little that less sturdy. And you can try the, the, the um, where'd that thing go? You can try it like this too if you want. You come like this. You okay. can do that, like a little, or, or you just lay it down and do the small. Let me hold it and see what I can. Yeah, so yellow. Okay. I like the three, the five and the three. I like that. Um, the centers of the flowers, I'm just going to use, you can use the little, little liner brush and do like a little circle, or you can just use, I'm going to try it with the filbert brush first. I'm going to use dark blue with a little orange, so it's kind of brown, and I'm just going to pop. I'm not there. touching your painting. Yeah, there you go. And that's, I'm just moving it in a couple different directions, and that kind of made it good enough to circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. So uh, I have my dark centers. Now I want some little dots. You remember how I make little dots? Yeah. How to make little dots. With that little thin, oh, uh, the back end. Yes. Yeah, I forgot. So if you dip 
your paintbrush. Now, if the paintbrush is thicker at the bottom, it'll make a bigger dot. So we're going to just make some little dots. I like making little dots. Some little dots here. Okay. And that's it for my flowers. Now they need to be, make sure they're, they look like they're connected. So this one looks like it's kind of flying. Oops, there was too much water on there. Oopsie. Connect there. Now you can see this orange. Some colors are more transparent than others. Yeah. Or opaque than others. This orange is very transparent. So you can see my branch through those petals, which I'm not crazy about. Right. So I can let that dry, or I'm going to just, usually if you add white to a color, it typically makes a little more opaque. So you could see I added some white to my orange, and I just covered that. I probably have to do it again, and maybe there. And then I'm just going to look at my bird. I feel like ugh, something's going on here I'm not crazy about. <laughs> <laughs> something's going on. All right, let's see. I'm going to add a little bit of white on my brush with a little bit of orange. I just feel like it needs to be a little lighter. Right here. But then since I I went underneath, I went yeah. at the bottom again, now I have to put something on top of those layers again. That's where you have to it watch. It gets complex. Yeah, so, well, it's okay. It just, but now I'll add some other orange to finish off those layers. Well, I'm trying to correct my mistake earlier. How's the orange coming back up top? So that looks if, good. And then try to put some yellow in the flowers like you yeah. said? Yeah. All right. So, that's pretty much it. I think a um, little highlight, these little feathers. Ah, too white. Add some orange. And then it's it's one of those things where you kind of need to know when to stop. Yeah. But I'm learning. It's <laughs> I like to look at my paintings, like walk away from them, go back and look at them. Yeah. And see. Get now an this is a very look. quick. A couple little highlights here. Very quick little bird here. But you can certainly come in and add more details on everything and play around with it, you know, more. You can add right. some more little veins on your... This one I don't have to add because Alan uh, added that vein for me. That's who knew I had skills like that? Yes. And this is the wind, the wind blowing the leaf, part of the leaf away. So we're going to leave We knew that. which way the wind was blowing. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to always sign your work, either on the front or the back or something. And I'm going to do just a little... I always sign and date my things on the back. And then I'll see if it's And my high. centers are brown, correct? Um, you can, I made mine a brown, brown to I'll brown I'll follow black. your lead, teacher. Yeah, I mean, it, if it's darker, it will kind of set in like the, you know, center of the flower. Yeah. And then this branch kind of looks a little weird. I just want to make sure this looks like that's a branch that he's sitting on. Some little shadows. Oh, I like that black in there, so I added a little bit of black, maybe where there would be a shadow. You don't have to if you don't want to. Like on the underside of the the branch. I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna repeat just a hint of that dark blue that we have on the bird. I wasn't planning on it, but now that I see it, I just feel like there, I, just I, I put my centers in. Am I okay? That looks good. With that. And then you then need your yellow. little dots. Yeah, mm -hmm. use the the back that, of the that, brush. That thin one. Yep. All right. So, I mean, we we this really needs to dry before. Were we almost done here? Yeah. I mean, it, it needs to dry before I would be able to do much on it anyway. But I think it's just kind of smoothing this out a little bit. Get some of this feathers. I think. Oops, some little bit of orange went on there, but I don't know. That's okay. What do you this think? looks great. Hmm. Little bluebird. Stuff like this right here looks a little strange. I think maybe just some. It just needed broke. It was just too flat looking. Let All right, me. where do I use the end of the brush? 
brush, brush in your it. in the white for the dots. For the you put it right into your white okay. paint. And I'll get his eye on that. Oh. Um you have to test it if you're doing the eye. Yeah, you can do that, but just test it and see how big it's going to be. See that's too big. Too big. Yeah. I use my brush for the eye, but you can use okay. that. Okay. Well I have yellow. I'll wash it off. Yeah. I'll wash both ends off. Yeah. Thank the only you. thing I would say for yours is if you can, let me show, let me show it, folks. <laughs> All right. We need to put the little highlight in the eye and outline the beak a little bit, and um, I think that looks good. Okay. For someone that hasn't painted since you were, what, 10? About 10. And you're like 40 now? That, that was 56 years ago. <laughs> It's I'm not really bragging. Good. I'm just saying. That's good. You did good. <laughs> I'm shaking now. No. I'm nervous. So what are you trying to do now? The to, white. Okay. Little tiny dot. So I'm test it. Put that in and roll it on your palette and test it and make see what size dot you're going to get. And then put that Looks a little, little too tiny big. dot. You just want to put it right at the end of the brush. Okay. And just do. Just line it. Oh, oh too yeah. deep. Let me try again. <laughs> <laughs> this is time consuming here. Okay. There. Good. Okay, just a tiny bit. I'm going in. Going in, just a tiny bit. Done. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Now can we I gotta outline get the black. his beak? Yeah. So so when I outline my beak. I need some black. The bird's beak, I should say. Yeah. So what I did was I flattened the little brush, the thin liner. I flattened it so that I got a flat line and then I laid the brush down on its side and just of. accent yes and i it was a thin black like i i added water to the black paint then it to test it on your palette okay and flatten the brush like there i have lay it. it yeah that's good that's that should work that should be good all right now i'll go above well you want to lay the brush you want to no oh. just like have it like if it's flat see that okay. see it's flat this way oh yeah i need to let help. the flat Part of the brush create the line Oop. there you go might need a little bit more water on there that's good Oop. then yeah and then come down that's good and you can always add if you I you can put some little out. bit of yellow on there that looks good yeah his 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 <laughs> face was flying off he just looked like he needed like <laughs> it just needed a you know needed some help yeah oh i look like he's smiling oh i love it don't yeah it. all right I like it. So we're good. Let's flip it around so we can show. Okay. You did really good. Oh, thank you. Birds, feathers, and fur are difficult. You did really good, Alan. And I helped you with a vein. Yeah. <laughs> and Alan, this very special vein in that leaf right there. Follow the pickle. Was created by Alan. I he salute dropped you. Dropped the foam core on my painting. But I'm, I'm taking that it. foam core home. I'm leaving it. <laughs> it's perfect. I love it. You're too kind, but Aww. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, next month, we will have a special guest, and she is a very well-known Pittsburgh promoter. Yes. And we, and her favorite color is blue. So I designed wow. this to uh, work with her, her vibe, and her favorite color. So we're yes. ready to paint this in for the June episode, episode yes. six. And yeah. thank all of you for watching. Yes. Thank all of you again for painting and wanting to paint. Yes. And I can't wait. For June's guest, yes. good friend of both of ours. Yes, she's awesome. Please watch again. Okay. Thanks for the great feedback. Thank you.